Section 25 of Astounding Stories, 11, November 1930. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reader's Corner, Part 2. Handy to Hold. Dear Editor, I wish to say that I have the seven numbers of Astounding Stories that have been issued thus far, and I have read them through every word. It is wonderful, and there is no word of fault to be uttered concerning any of them. I think Murder Madness is the best story you have printed so far, but they are all good in different ways. You received some letters that surprise me. How anyone can ask you to change the makeup to the blanket sheet form is more than I can see. It is so handy to hold and to read as it is now. I do hope you will not change it. No, there is so much that one wants to read these days that I do not advocate issuing twice a month. One issue each month is just right but I do wish you would increase the number of pages to at least the number in Five Novels magazine. Of course, you would want twenty-five cents for it then, and that is all right. I am glad that you refuse to give us reprints. We do not want them. Astounding Stories is a gem, and I hope to read it for the remainder of my life. Keep right on with the good work. Will S. Cushing, 21 Cottage Street, Abington, Massachusetts. We hope so, too. Dear Editor, your July issue of Astounding Stories was wonderful. Your magazine is improving greatly. Murder Madness is a great story, and Earth the Marauder is one of the best stories I have ever read. I hope the other parts of it are just as interesting as the first part. Mick Scott's, 115 West 16th Avenue, Gary, Indiana. Another Sequel Dear Editor, Well, I have so much to say, or rather would like to say, for your magazine. I like it in every detail but one, which is waiting a whole month for the rest of my stories. I wish you would give us the third sequel of Out of the Ocean's Depths. Let the young scientist discover a way to perform matrimony between the girl of the ocean and the man, and then let their child live either in or out of water. There could be two more good stories or sequels of Out of the Ocean's Depths. I like them all. I like Murder Madness, too. It seems as though it is really real, and not fiction. I wish you would get the book out twice a month. Mrs. B. R. Woods, Cott, Arkansas From Author to Author Dear Editor, Since Astounding Stories began, you have published a goodly number of really remarkable stories, chief among which, in my estimation, are the following. Spawn of the Stars by C. W. Diffin Brigands of the Moon by Ray Cummings Monsters of Moyen by Arthur J. Burks The Atom Smasher by Victor Rousseau and The Moon Master C. W. Diffin. But none of these can compare with Diffin's last short story, The Power and the Glory, which appeared in the last July issue. For originality of theme, clever phraseology, and excellent literary craftsmanship, it stands alone. A little masterpiece. Its author should be congratulated. To the best of my knowledge, Mr. Diffin is a newcomer in science fiction. The first story of his that I read was Spawn of the Stars. Keep his pen busy, Mr. Editor. He's valuable, and I don't mean maybe. If I could write a story like The Power and the Glory, I'd certainly congratulate myself. L. A. Eschbach, 225 Chestnut Street, Reading, Pennsylvania. Help me spellbound. Dear Editor, I happened to read one of your books the other day, Astounding Stories is the one, and I was very much taken up with it. I found that it was a very interesting book indeed. I have no fear in saying that it held me spellbound from the start till the finish. The one that I happened to buy was the issue of May 1930, and the story that gripped me most was Brigands of the Moon. It was very thrilling indeed, and I am very sorry I could not obtain the previous copy so as to start at the beginning. But, however, I am able to obtain a copy every month, and am very pleased, as I would hate to miss a copy again. Well, I hope this letter will reach you safely. Remember me as a contented reader of your magazine. George Young, 447 Canning Street, North, Carlton, N. 4, Melbourne, Australia. We are printing it. Dear Editor, It seems that you have taken a wrong slant on my letter which you published recently. True, I did give you a long list of stories which I wanted to see, but I didn't mean that you should publish only reprints, no new stories. Far from it. Instead, I'd suggest that you give us a classic, say, every six months. This arrangement ought to be okay with everyone. That's that for reprints. About the stories and the authors. They're all right. 
There's one thing that I like about you that I don't find in the other science fiction magazines. With the very first issue, you started off with the authors that are wanted by everyone who reads this type of literature. You began with Cummings, Rousseau, Meek, and Leinster. Hmm, let's see. And you're keeping up the good system by having added Vincent, Starzl, Burks, Curry, Miss Lorraine, Hamilton, etc. But you don't escape entirely unscathed, for the other magazines give us stories from authors which haven't as yet written a story which appeared in your columns. Let's see. Besides the stars above, let's add to the galaxy Keller, three cheers, Brewer, Smith, his story The Skylark of Space ought to have about six sequels, the late Mr. Service, Verrill, Poe, Wells, Verne, Flint, ooh, for that blind spot, Hall, England, Hasta, one story by him is all I've read, but it only whetted my appetite, and Simmons. Oh, yes, the two Taines, the detective of Dr. Keller's and the author. But there's something missing. Hm. Ah. A. Merritt. What a writer. How could I have forgotten him? Which reminds me of Burroughs, who has been left out in the rain for quite a while. He belongs back in the fold. Mr. Editor, do you remember way back when you said we should write in to tell you of the stories we want and that you would get them for us? Of course you do. Stories and authors cannot be parted. So get those authors I've listed above and forget about the stories, for they'll all be good. I do not kick about any particular author for the reason that if I tried to write on the same subject they picked out and are picking, my work would be pretty different from what they'd produce, and their works would be the ones that would be published. Please don't read that twice. I hope to be a contributor very soon. In my opinion, you should enlarge the size of the magazine, but for heaven's sake, don't increase the departments. Every day that we read a paper, we learn of what science is doing, and at the end of the month we read the same thing in a magazine which should give us a story instead. The price is just right. But even if the magazine were enlarged and the price boosted to a quarter, do you really think that we get enough material to devour? No. Then what? Get out a quarterly. And please don't wait about that for the next ten years. This is a pretty lengthy letter, and I don't expect you to print it, but I want you to get the views of at least one devoted reader. Isidore Manson, 544 Myrtle Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. Every single one. Dear Editor, I certainly received a pleasant surprise when I glanced at the table of contents for the August issue. When one sees Victor Rousseau, R. F. Starzl, Murray Leinster, Harl Vincent, and Edmund Hamilton. One knows that the issue is bound to be a good one. I wish to congratulate you on the way you have been running Astounding Stories. If you intend to keep giving us the authors you are now, throughout your whole career, you are a lawbreaker. What I mean by that is that no other magazine has kept a high grade of authors very long. The old magazines on the market have once had stories by the authors you are giving us now, but they never kept those authors long. If you keep the authors you have now, you may well be assured of success. Silver Dome undoubtedly copped the prize for this issue. It could not have been better. The Lord of Space was a very good story. The Planet of Dread was another very good story. The Second Satellite by Hamilton was excellent. For once in his life Hamilton has written a story that has not the same old plot all his other stories have. I wish to congratulate him on the best story he has ever written. The Flying City was the same thing all over again. The world in danger, and suddenly our magnificent hero comes along, takes a hand, and presto the danger is over. Of course he has to meet the beautiful girl and fall in love with her, and at the end of the story marry her. Remember, history repeats itself. Have you ever heard of the world being saved by one man? No, neither have I. The world will never be saved by one man. Therefore all those stories are the bunk. Murder Madness was wonderful. I expect to see it in the talkies before long. It could be filmed easily enough, couldn't it? I know it certainly would make a wonderful picture. I expect to see you publish Murder Madness and Brigands of the Moon in book form. If you do, I will try my darndest to get a copy. Also in my list of good authors up there I forgot to mention Arthur J. Burks. Now I wish to broach the subject of a quarterly to you. I think Astounding Stories should have one. Every other science fiction magazine has, so let us have one, too. Won't you? You can give us over twice as much as you do in the monthly and charge about fifty cents a copy. Have one good book and several short stories in each issue. 
No serials. How about it? And now let's talk a little about astounding stories. Why not cut the paper smooth the way you do in five novels monthly? It would make the magazine look a lot better. It would also be a lot easier to find one's place when one has to lay the book down for a moment. The last reason may sound trivial, but it's really annoying to try to find one's place among those bulky pages. The paper you use now gives the magazine an inferior appearance when compared to others of its kind. It certainly would be a relief to see you use better paper. Won't you please consider the points I have brought out in my letter? Gabriel Kirchner, Box 301, Temple, Texas. What authors? Dear Editor, Astounding Stories is improving with every issue. However, you would have to go far to beat the August issue. It can be called an all-star number. What authors? Hamilton, Rousseau, Starzl, Burks, and others, all of whom are among my favorite authors. The stories were so good that it is almost impossible to pick out the best one. However, after some thought I have finally chosen Hamilton's The Second Satellite. Earth the Marauder is a close second. I hope you have many more stories by Edmund Hamilton. I see that the cover is the first one to be of a different color. Please have a new color each month. There are a few ways in which astounding stories may be improved. Enough of the readers have mentioned improving the quality of the paper so that I do not have to comment on this. An editorial each month would improve the magazine greatly. Here's hoping that Astounding Stories becomes a semi-monthly soon, very soon. Michael Fogaris, 157 4th Street, Passaic, New Jersey. Stans Pat. Dear Editor, I have been a reader of your magazine for some time. I hope to continue reading it in the future. I notice in the reader's corner that some want reprints. Others want the size of the magazine changed. I say give us fresh stories and leave the size of the magazine alone. In my opinion, the best stories in your July issue were Beyond the Heavy Side Layer and Earth the Marauder. They were both fine. Keep up the good work. Carlson Abernathy, P.O. Box 584, Clearwater, Florida. End of Part 2 End of Reader's Corner and End of Astounding Stories, November 1930